Coming up now, 31 of them in all for the three four lap races that will be run continuously. There will be just one slowdown lap after each of the four lap heats in this 250 production race series and it's a very hot field. Front row of the grid, keep your eyes on John Pace number five, Michael Doohan six, Rodney Brown from Queensland on eight, Graham Morris on 30 is a hot shot also. Rod Gilbert, Martin Seymour in there, but Pace should be the most favoured of a lot of them. They're all on the front row of the grid. There are three rows in all, just one bike on the fourth row. And it should be unbelievably close. Ready for the start. And Pace is about middle of the front runners. He'd only be about eighth or tenth at the moment. And sweeping into the lead goes the Wizard Racing, Grant Hodson. He led on the warm-up lap, very enthusiastic the way he rode that. Haunting in behind him is Rodney Brown on eight. Looks like a, a pile of Japanese rushing to the Ginza for an electrical bargain. 3.2 kilometres around Surfers Paradise Raceway, a very fast racetrack. And this a tremendous training school for young riders. Very close, very hard. Any rider does well here is very good. Hodgson still holds the lead on 38. Behind him is bike 8, Rodney Brown. Third place, Graham Morris, 30. Pace in there in five. 10 is Peter Morgan. 42's Ron Carrick for Queensland Bike World. Coming around now onto the main straight where it'll be slipstreaming if they're close enough to the bike in front. The first five certainly are. And the race leader now is Rodney Brown streaking away on eight. The race leader's gone to third place. Second place is now Graham Morris on 30. Pace is looming up in fourth position on bike five. And a great mixture of machinery here with a Kawasaki leading a Yamaha and a Suzuki. And the race leader from that first lap very nearly back to fourth. It might have been him that ran wide there too. Brown now comes under pressure and is passed by 38 again. Grant Hodson back into the lead. No, it's not. No, it's 30. 30. It's Morris. Morris from second place. Little man, ideally suited to these bikes where he can get down really low and really snuggle in behind what small amount of fairing there is. And there's the race leader. He's fifth now from lap one. Pace is still fourth. Morris, little ginger head man from up Newcastle way, doing very nicely indeed. Getting a nice break here as he comes onto the main straight, and that could be critical, because if nobody can slipstream him up the main straight, and then he really gets stuck into it under the bridge, he could build up a nice, comfortable buffer. It's close and tight behind it. A second place goes Rodney Brown from Michael Doohan on six who's third, Pace still not in among the first three. The lap record is 1 minute 23 seconds. I've just got the race leader on a 1.23.86, so they're down on the lap record. Coming up to join them, Stephen Hopper on 70. He's getting up to this bunch of five, and that's an incredible achievement. Because if you don't have a slipstream in this very even form of racing, power very similar between different bikes, then it's very hard to catch a bunch, but he's doing that. Hopper. And it's Doohan in second place now on bike six. Still leading though, 30, Graham Morris. But Doohan doing a great job because he's hauling in Morris, the race leader, and by G, in an enormous slide and very nearly off the track, he makes ground on Morris. 
And Doohan is certainly the man who's trying hardest out of this field. We've seen the bike sliding all the way through the race so far. And of course, with these 250s, don't have an excess of power. And when the bike's sliding all over the place, it isn't necessarily the fastest line through the corner. But Doohan getting right up to the leader now, into his slipstream. As Pace goes out, or they all go out in their final lap, Pace is third. Right on his hammer is Rodney Brown on eight, and in fifth place is 38, Grant Hodson. And Doohan up into the lead. Beautifully out of the slipstream and takes him under brakes. Very good riding, and he really is chancing his arm. Oh, Morris comes back. But Doohan has been very fast to this next left hand off the back straight, but and he's about look to at lose the second. Behind him. Pace. Pace won't do it from there. So Pace getting in here with a chance now, losing a little bit of ground through that fast left hander up now to the tight section. Doing now, do or die for doing as he comes down into the S's for the last time. Doohan has to produce another bit of desperation round the side of Qantas Hill. He's doing it. If he can stick to the outside and gun it up early, which he couldn't do, he just might have got onto the straight and about evil, even pegging with Morris. He can't do it. And that little tantalising gap between the two of them might be just too much. Now it's a slipstream, a run to the line. Follow the leader. John Pace tucked in for third. Graham Morris leading, running to the line. And it will be Graham Morris from John Pace who makes it very nearly a dead heat for second place with Michael Doohan. And fourth with Rodney Brown on eight. And looks as though John Pace on five there in the middle of the three of them, as you saw them just a moment ago, might have grabbed second just as they went to the line. Well, they've now got only a minute or so before they regrid and go through this twice more. And they'll be forming up on the line, on the grid, in the order they finish this race. But of course, it bunches them all up once more and anyone who had a uh, a poor start to the first race who got or who got balked who ran wide or whatever has another chance to have a go at the leaders those 250 production machines standard selling for around three and a half thousand dollars had a race time of five minutes 42.52 seconds for graham morris the race winner in the first heat an average speed of 134.6 kilometers an hour Very good effort by Doohan on eight. Just pipped at the line, but some very forceful intermediate laps in the race. Pace, not away very well, but worked at it very progressively through the race and finally just grabbed second place in a wonderful effort in the last lap or so. Very tidy, very thinking sort of attack by Pace on five. Yes, it would look to me as though uh, Pace is going to be the thinking man, the biggest threat for the uh, this little three-race package overall. But uh, Doohan is certainly brave. 31 of them come back now to the start line. Grid up in the same order. I was saying that uh, Doohan is... Uh, abusing his tyres perhaps harder than the others and uh, I'll be interested to see whether they survive these three races as well as his competitors. Yamaha's in the first three places in that first heat followed by Kawasaki and then Suzuki in the top five. The last three bikes gridding up now coming into the final row. No, two more. Numbers 9 and 90, Anthony Trainor, and on 9, David Leabody on 90, all in readiness. Closest to camera, Rodney Brown. In the starter's hands. 39 in Patrick oh, Barnes. Poor start. Pace again back in the bunch. This is the second of the three continuous heats, or one on top of the other. And the battle between the race leader initially in the first race, Grant Hodson, and the winner, Graham Morris, on 30. 
And a great line from Morris there. He took a fine inside line, leaving the corner, and now leads. Pace has certainly left himself a lot to do this time, back in about 12th place. It was a very ragged start. In fact, it was almost the sort of start that you'd recall, but the race, uh, the, the race organisers have let it go. Rodney Brown's third on eight. And Doohan and Brown and Pace and others are going to have to get into it very smartly to pick this man back. Yes, Morris had a superbly controlled race in the first event, and with this sort of start, he's going to be hard to beat. Absolutely nothing tentative about these riders now that they've used the first heat to warm up. They're really into it. So if you like to look at it as a 12-lap race with two breaks, this is lap five, or the end of the first lap of the second heat. Pace is now into 2, 4, 6, sixth place. He's on the tail end of the second bunch of four. That's the leading pair. Pace is there, the tail end of that bunch. There he is. And Dern has taken the lead. A really bit of hard riding through the very, very fast sweeper at the end of the start finish straight puts Dern into the lead. And uh, as we've seen before, his bike, he's very fast off the end of this straight, but he seems to lack a bit of speed. The bike not running so well. And Morris takes over the lead again. Yes, indeed. Dern really does miss out under acceleration, so he's doing it under brakes and through corners. And certainly giving his tyres a tougher time. Not to mention the rider's nerves. Just look how much he gathers in there under the brakes. Now these two bikes should be identical, both uh, 250 Yamahas, but it does seem that Doohan seems does lack a bit of speed. Perhaps he's a heavier rider. And Pace is now third. So he's made good headway through the field. Look at him there in the black and white managed leathers. So he's taken three placings in less than half a lap, John Pace. Rider who tried his hand in England and was back in Australia nursing an injury just as it was all about to come good for him. And he got a phone call saying, how would you like to ride for us? A Grand Prix bike. The Heron Suzuki and he wasn't available. Halfway through now, the second lap of this race, but also halfway through the total of the three four lap heats. Side by side, doing late breaking, another bit of brave riding from this man. But he's on a wide line, he'll, lack, he'll lose out coming out of the corner. Pace right onto them too. Here he comes. One down, two, can he do it before he gets to the corner or will he be forced out? He's done it, John Pace into the lead. For the first time too, there's a number of riders, about four have led so far at various times. First time for John Pace on five. And now this is a Yamaha benefit, all ostensibly identical 250 Yamahas. Oh, beautiful style from Pace. Right off the bike there, not only to the side, but down low as well. Beautiful form. Little Graham Morris, shorter man, lighter than John Pace. Smaller build in behind him, achieving the same effect, helped partially by his small stature. Doing a little bit bigger, but also just not quite as experienced as the other two. And Pace now covers himself for the slipstream down the straight. As Morris tucks him behind him, looking for a way through. He won't do it before the bridge, but can he do it now? He pulls out of the slipstream, down alongside Pace. He's got him now. Pace maybe will tuck his wheel inside, looking for a way down to the next corner. Here he comes. Heading the bunch from which John Pace broke away is Grant Hodson followed very closely he's on 38 by rodney brown on eight they're the next behind these three now pace let's see if he tries that inside run again that he's tried so many times in the first heat but he'll be blocked out on that corner he won't be able to overtake him very well done graham morris forceful not bluffed out of taking his line and coming across on pace who had to yield now down the inside and Pace has got the line and he's got the race lead back again. Squeezes him out. <laughs> Morris wanted to stay there, it would have been tyres forcing him away.
what advantage for motorbike you can go down inside somebody and because you're cranked over so hard you're not going to touch them all that you'll t all that'll touch them will probably be your tires that's if you're cranked over far enough it might get to a bit of elbowing Okay, now Morris again, let's see if he can get out of the slipstream. Pace making as hard as he possibly can for him. The lap time, 1 minute 24.26 seconds, and that's the end of Heat 2. And a faster race than the first one by just one second, bringing the average speed up by... 0.6 of a kilometre an hour, averaging 135 kilometres an hour, John Pace. A race time of 5 minutes, 41.67 seconds. And it looks to me as though Duan is uh, suffering from riding a slightly older model Yamaha 250, and he definitely has a, a machinery disadvantage to the uh, latest model bikes which are in front of him. Well, the situation is that bike 30, Graham Morris, and bike 5, John Pace, have each won one race and come second in one race. So they're tied on 27 points going into the final winner-take-all four-lap heat of this 250 production series at Surface Paradise Raceway. Third place currently is bike 6, Michael Doohan, also on the Yamaha RZ. He has 20 points. Then comes bike 38, Grant Hodson, on 14 points. From bike 8, Rodney Bowne, the Kawasaki, on 13 points. But the race now is a two-horse event. It's between this man, John Pace, on bike 5, and bike 30, Rodney uh, Graham Morris. And uh, no matter how brave Doohan is in the final race, uh, I don't think he's going to beat these two. He, he, he really is very, very fast if a little bit on the edge around the corners, but uh, the straight line speed of his two competitors means that it's just not a practical proposition for him. The man to really watch is bike 38 Grant Hodson off the start. He's won both starts so far, Peter, and he's just a demon starter. Yes, it's uh, it's sad that the Suzuki doesn't seem to be able to provide him with the speed to uh, keep up with him once the race gets underway. Well, while the front runners are finish the race and they're slowing down lap reformed on the grid there's people still coming out onto the main straight so they've got to wait for a little while and it's interesting to note that uh, all the three runners just as we had a look along the grid all got uh, Pirelli Phantoms uh, on the front there I can only guess at what their rear tyres are obviously uh, Pace the team Matic rider will uh, also have a Pirelli on the back but uh, it means that uh, very, very similar equipment for the, uh, for, for the front three runners. OK, they're in the starters' hands again. The final four laps of Surface Paradise Raceway, 12 kilometres around. Shutter ready and... Oh, again, four start, and this time Donny Pass pulls them back into position. Won't let them start, and they're going. And that was a good start. That was nice and even, and Pace gets away pretty well. He's in among the front runners. I don't think he'll hit the lead before they go for the Dunlop Bridge. Again, it's Grant Hodson on 38. Right out of the pack, and again he takes the lead from the start. Graham Morris tucked in behind him in second on 30. And Morris takes over the lead from 38. Pace, Pace way back. Punching down the inside. He's fifth, having an elbow and an argument, and he's still fifth as... His opponent goes very wide. He was never going to be in contention, was he? Pace was giving nothing away there. Well, he was in the right position. On the outside, no spot to be. And Doohan back in fourth place at the moment, but uh, he rounds up the Kawasaki that's in third place. Now Morris has got the lead that he needs, and Pace has got to get through all those mobile chicanes behind him before he can get up to challenge this bike, number 30, Graham Morris. And remember, there's only four laps. Doing already up into second place now. Rodney Brown there on eight. About back at about six. And Pace, Pace up to third. Yeah, really charging through the field. There's Pace. Just a flash of the black and white Matic leathers. There he goes. So the split first to third place is 1.15 seconds. Graham Morris back to John Pace. In between them is Michael Doohan on the Yamaha RZ. Hitting probably 175 kilometres an hour down the straight. Two-cylinder, two-stroke. Production bikes. Amazing power outputs and acceleration from these machines. 
capable of a standing 400 metres in about 13 seconds. Pace is second now. Doohan sees no reason why he should let him do it easily, though, and challenges him on the outside, sliding and bucking. The rear wheel really did go out in Doohan's machine, but he hung on to it beautifully. Doohan knows he's got to get the power on earlier than Pace. Pace has the more recent, more powerful machine, and Doohan just sliding the back end as he got the power on a little bit too hard. One and a half laps down, two and a half remaining. Pace just falling a little bit off, if you'll pardon the pun, the pace there. As Morris charges down the back straight. And Doohan inside him. Yes. Incredible riding. Doohan's very, very fast off the back straight and managed to nip inside Pace coming into the right-hander because of his pace off the left-hander. And John can do without this. What he wants to do is to be up on Graham Morris. He doesn't need to be back there arguing with Doohan. But doohan has got to do something about the straight line speed of his opponents. He's really got to come out of this corner very fast and pick up on Pace's slipstream because Pace is almost bound to come past now. Morris looks behind him on his left side and sees only daylight. Doohan now looks behind him and sees John Pace coming out to pass him. And Doohan must get into the slipstream. There he goes. Got to hang on to Pace's machine. There's a yellow flag out. Looks like somebody's had an accident ahead of them. Only two-thirds of a second between first place Morris in a slide there and Pace now up to second place and certainly making up ground on him. That's been bridged. There was 0.67 of a second across the start-finish line, but look at what Doohan and Pace have done to it as they now go into lap 11. Now, unfortunately, Doohan too far back in third place to pick up the slip scene from these leaders. Here comes Pace on the outside, coming up to the big sweeper on the back straight. Can he do it from there? Yes, he forced bike 30 to back off morris had no option to about to back off there but maybe just maybe he can duck down the inside here and doohan once more picked up 10 yards through the left-hander pace covers his corner late hard braking now it's morris who's got the threat of doohan right behind him so not only has to worry about pace in front but he's also got doohan breathing down his exhaust pipes Now, Doohan's got to think what he's doing through this right-hander. He has to be right on the tail of the two bikes coming out of the corner. Watch the slipstreaming duel now. Down the straight as they come up to get the blue flag, indicating one lap to go. Pace looks the wrong side, and as he does, bike 30, Morris comes up alongside him and takes back the lead with just one lap remaining. And Doohan, with no slipstream, will just punch it in under the bridge, not daring to let off the throttle, trying to make ground by going through faster, letting it slide more trying to pin back this leading pair battling for the lead pace grabs it from morris doohan makes ground on both of them and is right now on morris but pace starting to run away just a touch now be interesting to see what the officials say because i reckon those two are overtaking each other under the yellow flag which is strictly against regulations morris down the inside can he get enough of a gap he can he's taken back the lead pace around the outside there's really now only one braking maneuver waiting for john pace down the end of this back straight and i think that morris has got enough of a lead to be able to hold him because doohan's going to try not quite close enough doohan to have a crack at pace and pace has come back beautifully on morris by g it is far from over it's the final lap of this four lapper the 12th lap of the three consecutive four lap heats doing round the outside trying to slip down the inside of pace in a second didn't make it pace trying to take morris got him oh. right hander onto the straight the run to the finishing line it's john pace on five leading from graham morris 30. michael doohan tucked in behind them for third place not as fast in a straight line morris alongside him here we go it's morris morris and pace side by side as they cross the finish line it's morris morris by half a wheel length i think what would you yes, say Peter? definitely morris and i don't think it was half a wheel it was unbelievably close Incredible stuff, and really, you know, my heart goes out for doing. He did everything. He had that bike sliding both wheels, and it just wasn't fast enough in a straight line for him. By just a fraction, the slowest heat of the three of them, five minutes, 42.93 seconds, so 0.4 of a second slower than the first heat, and that was it. Well, I was wrong. It's uh, just over half a bike length, but it was clearly Graham Morris on 30 from John Pace, second, on bike number five, the race average speed, 134.3. And Graham Morris won the three heat 250 production series with 42 points from John Pace on 39 and Michael Doohan on 30.